Welcome, everybody, to Friday Fire. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. As you guys start signing online, let me know where you're joining me from. What city, what state, what nation of the world that you're joining me from. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited about today's broadcast. So you know the drill. My Friday Fire, you guys are family to me. I'm so glad that you're joining me. Let me know where you're joining me from. I see Utah is in the house. I want to give you a shout out. So let me know where, even if you're watching the replay, let me know where you're joining me from. Utah is in the house. North Carolina is in the house. Texas is in the house. Um, Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, Who else is here? Uh, Pakistan is in the house. Welcome. California is in the house. South Africa is in the house. Come on. We have some nations represented. Southwest Georgia, Maui. Come on. That's a great assignment right there in Maui. Uh, keep sharing the broadcast. When you share this broadcast, let me know that you shared it. Just hashtag shared in the comment section. As you guys know by now, this broadcast is is a, a, a broadcast that's not a spectating only. It's a participation broadcast. So I love for you guys to comment, to like, to share, send up some emojis, let somebody know you're partnering with this word, let God know, but most of all, let the enemy know that you are partnering with this word and you are going to walk in the fulfillment of God's promise. I see more of you beginning to sign online. Florida is in the house. I will be in Florida next week for uh, the great conference in Tampa, Florida. Uh, So if you're anywhere in that area, I'd love to see you. Come join me. It's going to be at the Crossroads Church with my friends Lejean and Valora Cole. So that's next week. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. I see some of you hashtagging shared. Thank you so much for getting the word of God out there. I did a, a statistics And my viewership is up, yet my shares are down on the broadcast. And so I'm praying for people to partner with us, begin to share the broadcast so we can get the word of God out there. These tech companies want to limit our reach, want to limit the gospel, but I'm telling you, it can't be stopped. And so do that today. Share the broadcast. Tennessee is in the house. Who else is here? Um, Let me see here. Thank you, Don, for sharing the broadcast. Florida is in the house. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Elliot, for sharing the broadcast. Missouri is here. Uh, Texas is here. Thank you so much. Those of you that are joining me, those of that are watching even the replay, I want you to let me know where you're joining me from. Keep sharing the broadcast. Interact with, with the broadcast. You know, I'm from the Pentecostal church. So when I'm in a service, I like for people to respond. I like for people to pull on the anointing. So when you're on Facebook and you begin to comment and you begin to send up emojis, that's pulling on the anointing and it's making a demand on the anointing. But I want to go ahead and get uh, started in this word today uh, because I want to release what the Lord has been speaking to me last Last Friday, and, and at my church in Ramp Church in Chattanooga, we have been in a series on the second half. And it is just, I text my prophetic team today. I said, you know, this word is burning in my spirit because it's a right now word. We have entered in to the second half of this year of 2023. I, I don't know who's ready for the second half, but some of you, uh, you, you may be facing, I hear the Holy Spirit saying some of you have been facing disappointment because of what you, uh, it's what some things that did not happen uh, in the first part of this year. And I, I was writing a word yesterday and I believe it's for you. I know it's for you today. I heard the Holy Spirit say that some are grieving at the tomb of disappointment. You're singing the songs of heartbreak because you've been disappointed. When we marched into 2023, you were expecting some things to shift. and Maybe it didn't work out quite like you thought it was going to work out. But I want to tell you it's not over. We have entered the second part, the second half of 2023. And I hear the Lord saying, get your expectations up. Begin to believe again. Begin to have faith. Because God says, better is the end of the thing. That's the word. Better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. You haven't seen anything yet. I want to say that again. Better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. You have not seen anything yet. See, today it's very significant. Today is 
714. It's July the 14th, 2023. See, I believe that the Lord is saying, I didn't even know what the date was, but when I was praying for this broadcast, I heard the Holy Spirit begin to speak to me and he said, today's double. Today's double, and I, I looked at the calendar, and I'm not getting over in the numerology. I don't believe all that. I do believe God uses numbers, and I believe that God has set days on his calendar, and, and today on our calendar is uh, a 714. It is uh, the second half of the year, and some of you right now, I want to prophesy, you are coming into double. Where there has been heartache, where there has been grief, where there has been disappointment, where there has been death of a promise, death of a dream. Come on, I know I'm talking to somebody right now. I hear the Holy Spirit saying there's going to be resurrection. There's going to be new life. There is going to be double. I believe the Lord is releasing double in your life. It reminds me of the verse in Isaiah 61. It's verse 7 and it says this, For your shame... For your shame, you shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, in their land, they shall possess the double. Come on, in your land, in the land that God has promised you, in the, your land, you shall possess double. Everlasting joy. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Now, some of you get mad at me if I talk about the blessings of God, or we talk about what God is leading us into, or we talk about the goodness of the Lord, or what God has for us, but you're just going to have to get mad because I have to release what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. Yes, we are in troubling times. Yes, we see heartbreak. Yes, we see disappointment. Yes, we see challenges up ahead. Yes, we are in challenging economies, but I want you to hear the word of the Lord that God is not forgotten his children. God will make a way of escape for you. God is already, uh, just as in the word, he led the people, he allowed them to go into bondage, but then God suddenly released them from their bondage and he led them out with the wealth of Egypt. Not only that, but in Isaiah, come on, I talked about it last week. Let's go there right now. Isaiah 43. He says this. Remember ye not the former things. He says don't get trapped in your past. Don't get trapped in where you have been. Don't get trapped in what was at the first part of this year. Come on. I want to talk to somebody right now. Don't, don't get stuck in what you've been looking at. And it seems like it's been on repeat. I announce to you today. God says everything is changing today. God says, get ready. It's a divine appointment. It is a set time. Who am I talking to right now? Who is the Holy Spirit prophesying to? If it's you, I want you to just begin to tap out. It's me. Come on, begin to type out and receive this word right now. The Lord says to you, he says, uh, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Somebody type out new thing. Come on, God is doing a new thing. Hear the announcement of the Holy Spirit. God is doing a new thing. He says, uh, behold, I will do no a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, he says, I'm making a prophetic declaration. I'm making a prophetic announcement to you, to you, my Friday Fire family, to, to God's people. Hear me. He says, behold, I'm doing something new. Pay attention. I'm doing something new, says the Lord. Don't get stuck in the past of heartbreak. Don't get stuck in your past of disappointment. Don't get stuck in the past of what it's looked like at another season. He said, I am doing a new thing. And I love how it reads in the New Living Translation. It says this. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with his chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. 
But forget all that. He says, remember how I delivered you before? Remember how good it seemed when God defended you when you were at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was coming up? He says, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Don't you see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. He said, your wasteland is about to become an oasis. Your drought is over. Your drought is over. God says in the second half of this year, your drought is over. You're going to see the new thing. You're going to experience what God has been promising you. I believe today God sent me on this broadcast and God brought you on this broadcast. I'm getting carried away because I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. But I believe God has brought you on this broadcast to tell you an announcement, a prophetic announcement that he's doing a new thing. Don't get stuck in the old. Let your uh, expectation arise. Let your faith arise. God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. I believe today you need to know God has not forgotten you. What it looks like is not the way it is. This disappointment, the tomb of despair, the heartbreak of yesterday, the heartbreak of, uh, uh, of dreams and visions. And maybe, maybe some of you today, I hear the Lord saying that, that there's some ones on here today that have been going through marital uh, struggles. My wife and I last week, I told you, we celebrated our, our 16th wedding anniversary. And some of you may be going through marital troubles or marital struggles. And, and you can remember the way you felt when you made those holy vows. But yet it looks opposite of that. I hear the Lord saying, get ready for a divine shift. Get ready for divine intervention. And yes, now hear me right now. Uh, uh, we as humans as mankind we have the power of choice and decision so god's not going to zap uh, your spouse and, and they're just going to uh he's going to make them or force them do something or force your child to do something no but he can bring an awakening What he can do is have a Damascus Road experience. What he can do is cause them to awaken from their slumber. So you need to start praying for your child, for your spouse, for that loved one that's lost. I'm praying for them to have a divine encounter with you. I'm praying for you to awaken them from their slumber. But I'm telling you today, some things are shifting in your favor. God's hand is moving for you. I announce to you today, God's hand is moving for you. I had someone write me last week and they didn't like the message that the Lord had given me. They didn't like it and thought, you know, uh, it's too cheerful. It's too hopeful. It's it's giving people hope of finances, uh, of new businesses. But I tell you today, don't you believe that your God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. I wrote them back and I said, don't worry. He won't move like that in your life. But for some of us that are standing on the word of God, God is moving for us. For some of us that are claiming the promises, his promises are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. So that doesn't, it means wherever you are, you can start standing on the promises. This word is alive and is sharper than any two-edged sword. That means it it works in this economy. It means it worked in the 80s. It means it worked 10 years from now. If the Lord should tarry, I'm telling you, this word begins to come forth. It is sharper than any two edged sword. And he is a God that hears your prayer. I want you to know God hears your prayer. In fact, I hear the Lord just saying this right now, that some of you have been praying and it feels like that your prayers are, are just reaching the ceiling. It feels like when you pray, have you ever been through a season? I know I have. I've been through a season where I'm praying and it's like, God, it doesn't feel like you're hearing me. It doesn't seem like you're hearing me. And then other times you're praying, you're like, I know I reached heaven this morning. I know that God heard my cry. 
but I want to talk to you that, that those of you that you feel like, God, I'm praying, and it doesn't seem like anything's changing. It doesn't seem like anything's happening. God, oh, hear me, my friend. God has heard your prayer. God has seen your tears. And God is moving for you. He wants me to confirm to you today, God is moving for you. You say, I'm not worthy for God to move for me. I'm not worthy for God. to. None of us are. It's not based on our righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags before him, but it's based on what Jesus did on the cross and the fact that he defeated death, hell, and the grave, and now we are joint heirs with Christ. It's based on that promise that when we ask the Father anything in the name of Jesus, just as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, we are his disciples. And he said, when we begin to pray and we begin to ask him anything in his name, the father will give it to us. Come on. So we got to be careful what we begin to ask for. We've got to ask. Uh, I remember when I was praying for my spouse. See, I believe to pray in detail to the Lord. I believe he wants to give us the desires of our heart. So I will begin to pray in detail about things. And, and I was praying in detail. I had a list when I was a single man. I had a list of things that I wanted in, in a wife. And I, I, I went down the list and I would pray and I would call those things before the Lord. But then I would always finish it with, Lord, all of these things are subject to your will because I know your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I know your ways are greater than my ways. Come on, I see many more of you beginning to sign online and let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, share this broadcast to your wall. Tag somebody that needs to hear it because today everything changes. I hear the Lord saying that today he has heard your prayer. He has heard your prayer and some things are shifting. There is an acceleration that is taking place. And some of you right now are saying, well, I've heard this. I've heard this kind of word. I've heard prophets begin to say things like this. How do I know if it's for me? How do I know if this is really going to happen? I break all doubt in the name of Jesus. I break that questioning uh, mentality. I hear the word of the Lord and let it pierce your heart to where you know this word is for me. I stand on the word of God. I stand on his promises today. I believe it's shifting in your favor. He says, remember ye not the former things, neither even consider. Don't even consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I was running on the treadmill uh, yesterday. And I was asking the Lord what he wanted to speak to you. See, I, I don't just come on the broadcast and just, you know, uh, let me just recycle a message that I've had or, or let me just, I don't do that. I come with what I sense the Holy Spirit speaking. And, and if I don't hear him saying anything, I won't come on. I'll postpone it because I want to come on with a word that shifts destinies i want to come on with a word that's the word of the lord and let me tell you i take that very seriously i, I take it very seriously to come on uh this uh, uh this avenue or this this media to release the word of the lord when i'm writing i take it very seriously when i stand bef behind a pulpit I count it, uh, I do it with fear and trembling because I know that I am a representative of the Lord. And today I stand before you or I sit before you as a representative of the Lord. I believe with all my heart that he is speaking to you today, that he's doing a new thing, that in this second half of this year, it's going to be greater than the former it's going to be mightier it's going you're going to see answers to prayer the resistance that you have faced 
and I was <clears throat> ministering to someone this week, and I said, the resistance that you have faced even recently, they have been going through an attack in their finances, in their home, and, and it, it seemed like on every front, because that's the way the enemy comes in. He comes in on every front. Come on, is anybody going to say amen to that? Uh, the enemy will hit you here and hit you there and hit you in the front and hit you in the back. And you're just surrounded by all these attacks to where you say it's too much. I can't handle all this. You can handle one thing or two things. But when you come up under pressure and you're under attack from the left and the right and in the front and the back, then you feel overwhelmed. And I was talking to this, this man and I said, the reason you're facing resistance is because you're so close to stepping in to your promised land. You're so close to stepping in to what God has promised. That is why the enemy is terrified of some of you because you are so close to stepping in to what God has promised you. And the enemy has come in with an assault so great to try to make you forfeit what God has promised. But I came as an ambassador of Christ to strengthen you today so that you hear the word of the Lord and let you know that you are in a Kairos moment, that you are in a set appointed time, that you are in the time of the Lord. And he says, your season has changed. The hour is here. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, I'm going to read it to you for time's sake today, because I told you I'm not going to, I'm not going to be on very long today. But I, I, I want you to keep sharing this broadcast. I want you to keep commenting. I want you to keep sending up emojis. Because I, I, I want you to pull on the anointing and begin to believe the word of the Lord. But I heard him say, actually, let's go to Deuteronomy. I, I want to share this with you as well. Let's go to Deuteronomy. The sixth chapter. I usually have this marked, but for time's sake, I, I didn't mark it, and my, my little marker must have fallen out. Y'all keep sharing the broadcast as I find this, this scripture for you, but in Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says this. Find it here. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, let's skip down to. Let's read verse. 10. This is powerful. The Lord your God will soon bring you into the land. He swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig. And you will eat from vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, be careful. Hear me. Hear the Lord. Be careful that you not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. Now, when I was reading that today, I heard the Lord say that there is coming a transfer to the kingdom of God. Now, if you're one that you don't want to hear about uh, resources or finances, it's probably time to tune out of the broadcast right now because there's some people that have been struggling. There's some people that are under opposition and God wants to prosper you in every area of your life. It's amazing to me that God, God's people, some of God's people can believe that God wants to save them but can't believe he wants to heal them or can believe God wants to heal them but not believe that God wants to prosper them. It's just amazing to me. And believe me, I know that we have seen the church and we have seen voices that have gotten out of balance in this teaching 
or in teaching of prosperity. So I, I want us to be careful. Hear me. Hear my heart right now. I want us to be careful that we don't take this and get out of balance. God wants to fund the kingdom of God. He wants to fund. He wants to use you to be a blessing, not so that you can store it up, not so that you can hoard up riches. He wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing, so that you can fund the kingdom of God. But he says here that there are houses that you didn't build. There's vineyards that you didn't plant. He says, you're going to eat your plenty. He says, but be careful. Don't forget the Lord your God. See, that's the temptation. When you begin to think it's about you, it's not about you, but God is going to transfer. He's going to transfer wealth. He's going to transfer opportunities. He's going to transfer businesses. There's some ambassadors and businesses. There's some apostles in the marketplace that are going to rise up in this hour and they're going to have downloads from God and they're going to raise up businesses that bring solutions to problems that we're facing and it's going to cause them to be sought out. There's going to be ministers and there's going to be fivefold that are going to solve problems problems in this hour that are going to have answers because the world is looking for answers and even more so in the days to come they're going to be looking for answers and we have the answer and his name is Jesus and we're going to be sought out some of you need today to claim you're going to be sought out God is going to cause those that are going to need what you have to seek you out. You're not going to be left out. You're not going to, some of you face such a spirit of rejection that you don't know what it's like to be favored. You don't know what it's like to be sought out. We break the power of rejection. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus. Let God heal those wounds inside of you. I dealt with rejection. The Lord had to heal me because it, 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 it sidelined my perspective. I saw things through the lens of rejection. So you rejected me before you ever had a chance to reject me. I already saw you through that lens and my actions lined up to that. Come on. God's going to set some people free right now from rejection in Jesus name. Because when you see through that lens, the enemy is after your vision. And so if he can't steal your vision, what he wants to do is pollute your vision or cloud your vision so that you don't see clearly. So you'll see through the lens of rejection. You'll see through the lens of despair. You'll see through the lens of what you have been through so that you won't see clearly what God has for you. But today I say, Lord, let there be a fresh vision. Let the lens of the Holy Spirit, that's what I hear him saying, you will see through the lens of my spirit. You will, the enemy will be exposed through the lens of the Holy Spirit. You will see with spirit eyes. You won't look through natural eyes anymore. You won't see through past hurts. Come on, this is a word right now that's going to set you free. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, I didn't plan to share all this. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He said, I'm going to allow you to see through the lens of the Holy Spirit. Oh, because you are called for such a time as this. And the enemy has polluted your vision. He's made, made you want to give up. The temptation to give up has been great. But God is strengthening you even right now, right now, right now. He is giving you fresh strength. He said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. You haven't been this way before. I'll make rivers in the desert. I'll make a way in the wilderness. Those things don't make sense. He said, what I'm doing in this season won't make sense. It will be supernatural. It is beyond your natural reasoning. It's a supernatural answer. God says, I'm going to give supernatural answers to prayer. He said, I'm going to bring you. He said, there's a divine exchange that is taking place. Hear me. 
There's a transfer. You've heard about the transfer of wealth. I'm also prophesying there is a transfer of opportunities. There's a transfer of influence. And yes, it will come with persecutions. I don't want to give you false hope that there's not going to be any resistance. Oh, no. The church will face persecution. But also, we will have an answer. And God is giving uh, uh, us power. He said, we'll see an, uh, uh, a new revealing of miracles, of signs and wonders. God says, I will back up my word with signs and wonders. I will confirm my word. Get ready for it. If you're a church that doesn't believe in miracles and you believe that the gifts of the Spirit have passed and that was for the church in the book of Acts, but it's not for today, let me tell you, you're, you're behind schedule because the gifts of the Spirit are still in operation today and they're making a comeback. Why? Because we are living in a day and an hour that the world is desperate for an answer and he said, I'm going to confirm my word through signs and wonders. I will do it in the house of God. I will do it through the people of God. I will do it in, in church houses. I will do it wherever people begin to gather this triple threat movement. Come on, I wrote the book on the triple threat anointing. It is making a comeback and we will see the greatest move of God that we have ever seen in the history of mankind. Kind. We will see it. Why? Because the days are at hand. The hour is shortening. And I know people don't like to hear about, the, you know, the days are wrapping up or we are in the end times. But it's playing out before us. You just look at the current events of this day and hour and it's the book of Revelation and the book of Ezekiel and Daniel, it's playing out before us. We are in the end times, but God has not forgotten his people. He has not abandoned us. He has not left you forsaken. Hear me. He's doing a new thing. And there is a transfer that's taking place. And the gifts of the spirit are making a comeback. And God will confirm his word through signs and wonders. He will confirm his word through power. For the kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power. It's through the demonstration of the power of God that will shut the mouth of the enemy. It will shut the mouths of naysayers. You can't argue with a miracle. Or they may try to say you worked it up or, or, or something like that. But when somebody's life is genuinely changed by the power of God. See, you can never talk me out of my testimony. You will never be able to talk me out of that God healed me of seven many strokes when they said I may never speak clearly again. You can't talk me out of when God brought me out of three years of depression, thought I would never have my mind back again, thought I would never have joy again, wanted to die. You can't talk me out of what God has done for me. So when God begins to move in a person's life, you will, they will see testimonies. You can't shut the mouth of someone that has experienced the power of God. You will never talk me out of what God has done for me. And many of you watching today and watching the replay, they can't talk you out of what God has done for you either. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hears you when you pray. I believe everything is changing. And some of us, I don't know about you, but I don't always like change. Sometimes I like, you know, the other day I was, uh, we were talking about the school year starting for my, my kids. This, this next year, Gabriel will be in kindergarten and Juliana is coming into the seventh grade. Y'all pray for me. They are blessings of God. Uh, but I, I started feeling myself getting down thinking you know they're growing up and my wife posted a picture of Gabriel uh, he went to a baseball camp and he looked like a boy he didn't look like a, a he was looking losing that baby uh, appearance and and uh, it just kind of made me sad for a second 
But I hear the Lord saying, I heard him say, Andrew, things change, but it doesn't mean that it's uh, worse. It doesn't mean that, that, that your joy is over. Celebrate this new thing that I'm doing. Uh, my daughter, she got filled with the Holy Ghost when she was five years old, and she is a radical prayer warrior. But I see God doing new things in her and new gifts in her and her seeing uh, things prophetically. And, and she the other day she was talking about something that she saw in the spirit. And my spirit man began to leap because although she's not my baby anymore, although she will always be daddy's baby, she's growing up. There's still a new season and I get to be a part of it. I'm so thankful. But God says, I'm doing a new thing. Don't despair this new beginning. Don't don't uh, grieve in the past. Don't get stuck in the past. Behold, I do a new thing. It shall spring forth. But then I heard the Lord speak to me and I want to take you here. I know I said I wasn't going to be on here long. Thank you for all those that are sharing the broadcast. If you did share it, will you hashtag share? Just let me know who has shared the broadcast. I, I thank you for doing that, helping me get the word out. But I heard the Lord, he, he led me to First Chronicles chapter 4. And I'm just going to read two verses here from the New Living Translation. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. And the King James says, bless me indeed. And expand my territory. B please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And I love this. And God granted him his request. Now, when you study that out, his name Jabez, it meant sorrowful. Because, see, back in those days, they understood the power of a name. And so they were named after circumstances or after situations or even places. But he was named because of the pain that his mother experienced. When I began to think on that and I began to uh, really uh, ponder this and dwell on this and pray about this, the Holy Spirit began to show me how that even things passed down from generations can stop or try to hinder your destiny. But I'm telling you, generational curses are breaking over the people of God. Some of you watching this right now, you have dealt with generational curses. You have dealt with patterns in your life that have been passed down from one to the other to the other. But I say it stops with you. And we plead the blood of Jesus over your life, over your children, over your family, over your finances, over your body. I know they may have dealt with it, but guess what? The blood of Jesus covers you. And and so we break that assignment in the name of Jesus over your life. She named him sorrowful. So every time everyone said, hey, Jabez, they were saying, hey, sorrowful. Yeah, you're sorrowful. You're sorry. You cause pain. You cause discomfort. You cause uh, your mother pain. Sorrowful because his mother birthed him in pain but one day come on he got bold enough to pray to the God of Israel and I love where this text occurs because if you look at it in in, in the Bible all the the scriptures prior and after are giving a lineage and it's just naming these names but God interrupted all of that and put this scriptures right here to let us know Jabez was different there was something that happened he had the boldness to change his uh, his the pronouncement over his life he had the boldness to stop and pray to the God of Israel to the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and when he did he began to pray and this is what he prayed he said bless me See, it's not wrong to ask the Lord to bless you. He said, bless me. And he said, enlarge my territory. Bring expansion in my life. Bring influence in my life. Enlarge my coast is the way it reads in the, the King James. He says, enlarge my territory. 
territory. Some of you are ready for enlargement. God's ready for your enlargement. Then he prayed, be with me. See, that shows you his heart. He wasn't just praying, give me the blessing. Give me, give me, give me. He was saying, I want you to be with me. I love uh, when it, uh, it talks about in the word. And I was praying this the other day. I said, God, I don't want to be one that just wants the blessing. I don't want to use you like a genie in a bottle or like some wish granter. God, if you're not going, I don't want to go. As much as I desire this thing, and I was praying about a desire that I had, and it had to do with ministry, but I was praying about a desire. And I said, Lord, as much as I want and I desire this in my heart, I said, Lord, I don't want it if you're not going. I don't want the blessing without the blesser. I said, God, stop this if it's going to cause you not to go with me. That like Moses prayed, God, I don't want to go if you're not going. I don't want to go to the promised land, to the land flowing with milk and honey if you're not going. And I believe that's what the heart of Jabez, because yes, he prayed for blessing. And yes, he prayed for enlargement, expand my territory, enlarge my territory. But then he prayed, be with me. I don't want you to leave me. I need you. I need you to be with me. I need not only the blessing, but I want the blesser. He said, be with me. And then he prayed. And I love this. Keep me from trouble and pain. In the King James Version, it reads evil and grief. Some of you have been trapped in grief. You've been trapped in pain. And I don't belittle what you went through because I'm telling you, the enemy is evil. And he wants to destroy you. He wants to stop you. That's why he has assigned demonic spirits to stop you, to trap you in the pain of yesterday. But remember what he prophesied on Friday for fire and prophesied in the book of Isaiah. He said, I'm doing a new thing. You can't be trapped in yesterday. You can't be trapped in the past. He said, I am freeing you from the pain of yesterday. And I will keep you. I will bless you. And even as Jabez began to pray these things, I love how the last sentence of that prayer is, or that, that verse says, and God granted him his request. It was about a year ago, maybe, maybe two years ago, the Lord showed me a vision of a, a, a giant uh, a giant um, uh, courtroom and I saw the Lord putting down the gavel. It was a giant gavel and it, it, it began to, to, to hit the, the desk or the table. I saw my eyes were focused on the gavel because it was so large. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, the Lord has made a decree. God has granted the access. And so when I received that, I, I've written about it. I, I, I've told about that vision. And the Lord just brought that back to my memory when I read that, the end of that verse. And God granted him his request. The gavel is coming down on your circumstances. And it's not the enemy's gavel. It's God. He is the judge. He is the one who lifts up one and takes down another. He is the one who blesses. He is the one who, who grants requests. He is the one. Every good gift cometh from the Father. He is the one who gives answers to prayer. And I want you to know today, my friend, God has heard your prayer. And I know that people have said you're just sorrowful. You're just always going to be trapped in that pain. You'll always be. And don't you remember? It came from your mother. It came from your great grandmother. You've always dealt with this. But God says, I'm interrupting that lineage because you are the seed. You are a joint heir with Christ. You are one that I have called out for such a time as this. And he said, I'm doing something new. Don't get trapped in yesterday. God breaks 
the assignment of the enemy. That contradiction, that, that, that resistance that you have been facing, that opposition is confirmation that God is bringing you into the land that he has promised. The enemy won't fight those that aren't moving in the ways of God. They're not moving into the promised land. Giants, one of my favorite things to say, is giants are a signpost that you're on the right track. You're on the right way to your promised land. So that giant that you're facing today, many of you, that giant that you're facing today needs to know that God has chosen you and that you are favored of God and that you're a giant killer and the giants are coming down and you are casting out those giants out of your land because God has made you a decree, has made you a promise, he has made me a promise and every promise comes forth. He is not a man that he should lie. He is not a man that he should lie. God says to you today, He's making a prophetic announcement to you. You're coming into a new season. Get ready. You haven't been this way before. But oh, what he has for you, everything is about to change. But as it changes, be aware. Be aware because when your finances change, so does your responsibility. When your influences change, so does your responsibility. Come on. To whom much is given, much is required. So you got to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for where God is leading you to. Because in the second half of this year, oh yes, my friend, you are coming in. It's all, you were already here. You can either begin to walk in what God has prepared for you, or you can stay trapped. But for me, I'm going to walk, and I believe you are too. I believe that's why you're watching this broadcast. Come on, keep sharing this broadcast. I want to pray for you right now. Because I hear the Lord saying some of you have been stuck. Some of you have been stuck in the pain of yesterday. You've been stuck in word curses. You've been stuck in what they've spoken about you. You've been stuck in what you've been through prior. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to feel like, God, I can't move. I'm trying, but I can't move forward. But God says to you, oh, he sent me on assignment today. Those cords that have been binding you up, those weights that have been holding you back, I say they break now in Jesus' name. Come on, receive this right now. Lord, I thank you that you are the God that hears, that sees, and that answers prayer, just as you did for Jabez. God, right now on Friday Fire, me and my Friday Fire family, my friends, we come together. And Lord, we ask you to bless us. We ask you to enlarge us. We ask you to expand us. And most of all, we ask you to be with us. We ask you to never leave us nor forsake us. We claim that promise. We ask you to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. We ask you to keep us from going to the left or to the right, but for staying on track for your will and your purpose. And God, I thank you. Just as you did for Jabez, you do for us. God, I thank you for the answers to prayer. I thank you. Oh, I thank you for the answers to prayer. I thank you for miracles breaking out right now. Let a healing revival break out right now. If you're sick in your body, begin to lay your hands on that place where you're sick. Let the power of God begin to flow over the airways and flow into wherever you're watching and flow into your body. And I say be healed in the name of Jesus. All pain has to go. Doctor's reports has, has to be reversed in Jesus name I say let marriages be restored let finances be recovered and not only be recovered but let a new level of finances come let a door open that no man can shut and doors open that no man can close God I thank you I thank you Lord for closing doors no man can open I thank you I thank you for the Holy Spirit that leads us, that guides us, that protects us, that teaches us. God, I thank you right now for moving for your people. I thank you for testimonies coming forth. 
I call forth those testimonies. I call forth miracle breakthrough. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. And I ask you for not only myself, but I'm asking you for your people right now. God, bring forth breakthrough. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. There's many more. There's hundreds of us that are watching that, God, we come into agreement and we put the enemy on the run and that we'll watch. We put the enemy on the run and we say, release the breakthrough now, Lord. Release the breakthrough now, Lord. Come on, you need to begin to praise him right now in your homes. You need to begin to testify. He is the Lord of the breakthrough. I hear him saying he is breaking open some things that have been closed off. He said you will not be left out any longer. But God says the transfer is going to cause you to be sought out. Rabashi. Rumo sokoto rabashi ketararabasiya. Today, 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 everything changes. Today, the Lord is breaking in on your behalf. Lord, I thank you. Come on, somebody just start giving him praise. Come on, start giving him praise. Watch him do it. Begin to thank him for it. You say, I don't see it yet. Oh, begin to praise him. And as you begin to praise, it shifts the atmosphere. And it begins to shift. And God says, my hand begins to move on account of your praise. He said, I will not disappoint you. I'm removing the shame today. I'm giving you double. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I praise you, God. I thank you, Father. I thank you right now. We're at the halfway point and that we are at a moment and the things begin to accelerate. The, what, what has been slow and what has uh, been tick, 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 tick. Lord, I thank you now. It's going to be by divine order. The rhythm of your plan is speeding up now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, receive this word. I delivered what the Lord gave me. And I'm praying that you receive this word with gladness. And I'm praying you mix action with your faith. Come on. Don't just hear the word of the Lord. But be a doer of the word. Be a doer. Mix action with your faith. Faith without works is dead. We don't move by works, but faith without works is dead. You got to do something. You got to believe God that God is moving on your behalf. So listen, I want to hear from you because I truly believe that today, 714, double, things shift in your favor. I want to hear your testimony. Go to andrewtow.com. My email address is there. You can contact me there. You can sow a seed into this word there. Whatever. I want to hear how God has moved for you. Share this broadcast. I love you. If you're anywhere in the Chattanooga area, I want you to come to Ramp Church Chattanooga this morning. Uh, not this morning. This Sunday morning. This Sunday morning, 1030 a.m., we have corporate prayer at 930. And let me tell you, it is powerful corporate prayer. We have a team of intercessors and, and, and prophets that begin to prophesy, begin to pray. You don't want to miss it. So come this Sunday morning. I'm continuing the series on the second half because I believe we have entered into a second half season. And it is greater than anything you have seen yet. I love you guys. I thank God for you. Listen, if you're in Florida, also, next week, I'm going to be in Tampa, Florida. Also, they are airing a program, uh, uh, Take Home, um, Come Home with Jen. Uh, Jen Mellon, she is uh, on CTN, the CTN network. So it reaches Florida, Central Florida. It actually reaches throughout the world. So it's going to be re-airing on Friday the 21st. And so check your local times there. I love you guys. I thank God for you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for being my Friday Fire family. I'm praying for you. God bless you.